welcome to another episode here at Deep Mountain Security. Today I want to kind of go over a couple of places that you can look for malware on your computer. Uh, most likely after you have identified something that might be potential malware. Um, and I'll kind of show you a couple of places that you might want to look and how to find that as well. Uh, but I kind of want to focus more on some of the locations that you need to go to to look for this kind of information. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start with is Task Manager. Um, because this is going to be the number one place that you're going to discover something uh, running that shouldn't be. Uh, so I really recommend getting to know, I actually just full screen this, uh, getting to know some of your different uh, processes on your computer to the point where you kind of have a little bit of an idea of, you know, what does what. Um, that, that's probably one of the key elements, I believe, in understanding and, and discovering malware on your computer is knowing how your computer works to the point where you know when it's not working like normal. Um, and I'll probably say that a couple more times because I believe that that's really important. When you know how your computer works, how it's supposed to be run, what it looks like, and how it acts when it's running normal, uh, then you'll be able to determine when something might be off or when you might, you know, feel like something's not quite right, then you can get, you know, start diving deeper into it into when you suspect that your computer might be running malware because of misbehavior, etc. And uh, that's just really useful for determining when you may or may not have out malware. Um, so a couple of things, uh, to places to look for. Um, the first one would be in the details of Task Manager. Uh, so these are individual processes. Um, you can either group them by name or by who's running them, so you know, either local account or service or network services systems or other specific accounts as well. Um, descriptions always useful, you know, stuff that doesn't have descriptions. Uh, mm, you might want to look into that, you know, figure out what it is. Um, you know, so take a look and see if it's something you recognize. Is it something you've installed or not? Um, another place that you can look similar to that, if you go to your control panel and go to uninstall a program, uh, you're going to notice a list of everything that you have installed on your computer. Um, and as I look over this list, I recognize absolutely every one of these, and I have installed each one of these. Um, if you see something that you either didn't install or don't recognize, I recommend running a Google search on the name and the publisher. You can also include the version number if it has one and you'd like, you know, want to get a little bit more specific sometimes. Um, but enter the details into Google or Bing or uh, Google it with Bing or whoever your search engine is, you know, of preference. Um, uh, you can, there's a couple of websites you can go to as well. I won't get into those right now. But if you just Google the name of the software, uh, see if it pops up things like, um, oh yeah, this is a malware or this is a Trojan or this is a virus or a worm or, you know, uh, some kind of a known threat um, is really useful. And um, so, you know, uh, that, that's going to kind of give you an idea of what exactly it's doing or who makes it or what kind of a software it actually is if you don't recognize it, you know. Um, and one of the keys to recognizing software that you've installed is being able to know what to click when installing software. And I haven't done a video on that yet, but I'd like to. Uh, let me know if you would, you want one as well uh, in the comments below. But I want to do a video on um, no, no, installing software using advanced methods. Uh, because when you just use all the defaults in a software installer, generally... Um, it's going to want to install extra programs or extra features or uh, put toolbars in your web browsers or reset your home page or install malware, or adware or bloatware or, you know, something like that. Um, and we don't like that. And so by going through the advanced options it gives you, uh, you can still um, be able to install it without having to know a ton. And it's just a lot better for your system overall as you're not going to be installing tons of stuff. But anyway, so you can look for stuff in here, and then you can look for stuff in the details section, uh, section of a task manager. Um, so you can kind of go through some of these, you know, and look for stuff that you don't recognize. Um, after you have discovered a, an application or a process or a service or something that uh, appears to be malicious and you've identified it on Google or another search engine, 
that it is indeed malicious and many, many other people have reported it as being malicious and you've decided you want to get rid of it, uh, then you have to take steps to uh, finding where it has rooted itself inside your system. And this can be one of the most difficult processes of removing malware from your system. And uh, uh, so, once again, Control Panel is a good place to go for that. Details in Task Manager. Uh, you can also go to Services in Task Manager. Um, you can also get to more detailed service information by going to services.msc. Um, this just opens up the administrative console for all these services running on your machine or not running. You know, these are just all the local services for your machine. And from these, you can find out how they're uh, being triggered, you know, uh, when they're started, uh, what network account they're running on as you can get a decent description on what kind of a service it is um and you can generally um uh you know get an idea by going through and looking at the description in here so after you get a name you can take that name and kind of look for related uh stuff in both descriptions and names in here um so that's one thing you can do uh, another thing to do is you can check startup folders. So if you go into the start startup tab of task manager, you're going to notice that you've got a couple of different things in here, uh, some of which are enabled, some of which are disabled. And by right clicking on them, you can disable them or you can click on the disable button on that bottom right hand corner. Uh, you can also open the file location to figure out where in the world it's at. Um, you know, here it is. It's in this folder program files VMware that can give you a little bit more information to go off of. Uh, and you can kind of do some similar stuff if you go over here and click right click on a detail a process you can also open the file location you can actually click search online right here if you're curious about an application it'll actually uh look it up for you and so um uh you know maybe look down until you find something i don't know maybe from microsoft or something um to figure out what exactly it's doing um or you could go open the file location you know and do a couple of other things here uh, so that's useful too um and so you know you can do all these great things from right here another place to look is ms config and you have to be careful in this application because you can really mess up how your system starts in this application if you're not careful um but um so if we can go to startup and you're going to notice here that when my computer starts up um we're gonna have all these different uh, services that will start up running. So we can kind of go through here and kind of look through some of these, the manufacturer, um, and we could disable some of these and that will automatically change us from a normal startup to a selective startup, in the which case we are selecting um, what items we're starting when we start. Um, so, you know, this can be disabled or, or this can be really helpful when trying to figure stuff out. Also, if you're having a hard time uninstalling the program from control panel or stopping the service from task manager, then you can um, uh, um, disable the service from starting up. And the next time you boot your computer or you can disable all services or do a diagnostic startup, in the which case that should hopefully allow you to go in and delete files that are currently in use by specific services because then those services won't be running. You can also go to startup here, but that just redirects you to task manager. Uh, there's a couple of other things in here, but we don't really need to worry about those right now. Uh, so that's another place that you can go to find information about that. Um, another place that you can look for, and once again, this is another thing that you could really mess up your computer if you don't know what you're doing, um, is the registry editor. Um, and that's not a Microsoft command console, but whatever. Um, so if we open up our registry editor here, um, you're going to notice that the registry editor consists of keys um, and just tons and tons of stuff in here and these if everything in here is going to have different values and different values do different things um, but anyways what you can do is you can go up to um, uh, edit and you can go to find and you're going to notice find is control f and find next is f3 so if i go find and i wanted to find everything involving drive you know whatever the name of my malware was it's probably not going to be drive um, but then we're just going to leave this as default and we're going to match partial. So I'm going to click find next. We already found it. There's one drive. If I hit F3 again, it'll take me over to here. And if we kind of full screen this, you know, make it a little bit easier to see, I suppose. Uh, you can kind of see where, where the key is or whatever. And as we continue to hit F3, we are just going to literally uh, bra fly through the registry here. And you're going to notice there's just tons and tons of stuff in here. Um, but this might be one place where it's storing keys of uh, whatever kind or you know whatever else in the world it might be doing um so you know we could 
if we were, you know, so you kind of have to be careful what you're doing in here when removing malware. And that's a video for another day if you guys want to know more about that, uh, what to delete and what not to delete. Uh, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, um, so yeah, registry editor is another good place to look for. Um, after you've uninstalled the program files or you've tried, you know, stopped the process, stopped the service, maybe deleted the service out of, you know, the service uh, manager. So if we um, uh, went in here, um, went to properties, um we might not actually be able to um uninstall it from here but you can always you can generally change options in here um because it should be removed when you delete the uh, uh program files or uh, rather um uh, when you uh uninstall it but you can always go take no action and stop the service and uh use maybe um uh, some random account that doesn't work or change the startup type to disabled and stop the process, you know, whatever you might want to do there uh, to try and get that to stop working. Um, and then if we come over to here, we can go to our C drive and there's going to be all kinds of stuff on the C drive itself. Um, so if it has a folder directly on the C drive, that's probably bad. Uh, you can get, find it right here usually. Um, also, there's program files you can go down through here. And once again, after you know the name of the malware or the process or the services that are running, uh, that kind of gives you more of an idea of what to look for in terms of files and other processes and services and whatnot to look for that might also need to be stopped or deleted. Uh, so you can generally find something in here and you can go down. You're going to want to try and delete that folder. Uh, you might also be in program files in here. Um, you might be in program data. So if you don't see it like a program data folder, or if I go into it here and you don't see like an app data folder right here, um, then that means that you're not currently looking at um, uh, uh, hidden files. So to change that, we go to view and you can click show hidden items. Um, or if you don't know how to do that, you can actually go to folder options, which is this little thing right here. And you can get to here by just typing folder options on here. Um, so we can, you know, that'll open up the exact same thing. Or you can go into control panel and look for it in there. Uh, if you're on something other than a Windows 10 machine, uh, but, you know, still Windows specific, then you go over to the view tab and then you can go down and click on show hidden files, apply and OK. Um, and then you should be able to see hidden files. So once again, if we go back up to program data, um, if you see something in here that contains the name of it, go ahead and delete that as well. Um, you might also be able to go into Windows and then look through your app data folders in here. And if you go through roaming, you might be able to find it in there or maybe in local or, uh, you know, other folders that might be in here. So you might be able to kind of go down through some of these, maybe even in the, you know, the default um, user is having something in there or the public user uh, might have something in here. Um, so, you know, th those are all places that might contain stuff. Um, another place, um, and this is kind of interesting, um, is generally in the Windows Start menu. Um, sometimes, especially in older um, uh, Windows systems, you're going to notice that there will be a startup folder actually in the Start menu. Um, and you can get to that by navigating to it on your C drive. Um, but anyways, so if you have that in there, you can always right click on something and you can uh, usually delete in older versions of Windows. And Windows 10 is a little bit different. Um, um, they might also put stuff in other places on your system. Uh, you never know. Uh, so, you know, might want to start through the menus. Um, you can also run uh, find on your entire C drive. So if you go up to your C drive, you can search the local disk for the file name or file extensions or similar items to help you kind of look through that. You can go over here and you can type through stuff and search through your computer this way. Um, if we type in startup here, um, uh, you know, you might have some different startup options maybe in here. Um, oops, that was actually a bad idea. But anyways, you kind of guys kind of get the idea. Um, that's kind of, you know, some of the places that you can go to um, to look for things that you shouldn't have on your computer um, or, you know, um, you know, j just some different places that uh, might be useful to look for. And But that's, once again, after you have discovered that your computer is not running like normal um, or you have, you know, your computer kind of seems to be running a little weird or, um, uh, um, you, and you've been able to go in and identify what might be potentially causing the issue and you're sure that that's causing it, then you can go ahead and, uh, you know, begin the process for removal. Uh, once again, here at Deep Mountain Security, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.